Always remember that anytime you get ready to throw, you must first have gone through a thorough stretching program. We're going to work with some of our younger players here in terms of the throwing, but even younger players need to go through stretching. You're going to reach a point where your muscles have developed to the degree that if you don't get stretched properly and go through a thorough stretching program, you're going to end up hurting yourself. You're born knowing how to throw with one arm, at least most people, and unless you can trade that in for a better one, you better take care of the one that you have. Now, the good thing about working with young players in terms of proper throwing technique is they don't haven't necessarily learned any good habits or any bad habits. In many cases, they don't really have a habit. If you can get one young enough where you can teach them the proper technique, you can sure help their arm. If you wait till they're 15 or 16 years old, it's too late, really, and one in a hundred is going to be able to make a change to noticeably uh, improve what they're doing uh, to be able to play at a higher level. It has to be done eight, nine, ten years old, and it has to be worked through. So we're going to work with our younger infielders and make sure that they know how to do it right. Okay, we always want to make sure we take a four seam grip when we grip the ball. Tom, if you would, hold out a little bit. Four seams across the seams, all right, hands together in front of the chest. An infielder takes what we call a short arm circle. A short arm circle involves never dropping his hand below his waist. We don't want to drop it down in here. That's an outfielder or a pitcher. And we don't want to come here with the elbows. That's a catcher. We want to go short arm circle, give him a chance to gain just a little bit of arm velocity, and yet still make a nice rapid throw wherever he needs to go with it. Okay, That's throwing the ball. Receiving the ball. We want to make sure when we receive the ball that we show our partner our box or our window here feet are spread, knees bent just a little bit, and we always want to anticipate a poor throw. If the ball moves Tommy to his right, he just slides his feet and stays in front of the ball. Okay. If the ball moves him to his left, slides his feet, stays in front of the ball. Above the waist, we're going to use the thumbs coming together to catch it, trap it in. Below the waist, pinkies come together and we trap it in this way. Always using two hands. Take a little pride in the way that you throw. You can actually get something out of this. And I don't care how old the kids are. If they're eight years old, make them do it right. Because the more you emphasize the right way to do things, the faster it's going to become a habit for any player that you have. Okay, fellas, let's go ahead and get loose. Always anticipate the bad throw. Hands up, catch them with two hands. Notice how they step right to left, left to right. Very nice. That's it. Two hands all the time. They're getting themselves loose. They're not just getting loose here. They're learning how to catch the ball in game situation. Notice how they do it right every time. Very little sense in throwing and not working your technique. You can do both at the same time. The way that you throw and the way that you begin prior to the practice and prior to your game is the tempo that you're going to set for the rest of the day. If you're a coach or a parent, demand. Don't ask. Demand that they do it right. And if that means you have to go down the line with them to get it done, fine and go down the line with them but make sure they're throwing and catching the way it needs to be done because I'll tell you something games generally aren't won by overpowering people they're lost and they're lost because you can't pick up a ball you can't throw the ball you can't throw a strike this is where you learn how to win ball games right here